In this tutorial, I'm going to take a Winx Briar model horse and customize her slightly without taking away the essence of her original mold. Hi there, it's DJB. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name is Darren, and in this video, we are going to be learning how to make simple but effective customizations. So the first step is choosing your model. And I have quite a few bodies in my body box to choose from. A lot of these sculptures, I really enjoy parts of them. And I don't want to take away parts of them that I think make them so likable and aesthetically pleasing. So like Total Ass here has a really nice face. A lot of people really like this model. This is a great example to use because we could add a completely new mane on him because he's already roached and his tail could be modified as well. His face could be detailed a little higher. And you could have a lot of fun retexturing and resurfacing some of these older sculptures as well. But for the purpose of this video, I have chosen Winx. And the reason I chose Winx is because I really appreciate the muscling in here that's happening. I really appreciate the legs and she just feels very thoroughbred to me and I really like the essence that exists and I think once you add a realistic custom paint job to this body form it's going to look very realistic and that's my biggest thing is a lot of these sculptures are nice but with the OF paint job it's not as realistic as it could be so if we add a realistic paint job, Total Ass suddenly looks like he would be a resin sculpture. And that's essentially my perception of what makes a good briar for customizing and what doesn't. I don't love her mane and I don't love her tail. And we could make her face just look a lot more realistic. And now this model doesn't have terrible ears on it either. These ears actually have quite a bit of personality, but we're probably going to just re-sculpt her new ears because it's easier to start fresh in my opinion. And if I, we twist this ear, flick it back, flick it, flick both back, or flick both to the side, we'll see that we can change her personality in just that element alone. And I will be analyzing that and changing that as we go forward. But I also would like to update and modify her nostrils. A lot of Briar models from the factory don't have the most realistic mouth and muzzle and that's mainly because they provide the air hole in the face. So that'll either be in the nostril or in the side of the cheek and that causes problems with prepping and making a realistic looking horse. So I like to remove that and by doing so we're going to just remove the whole muzzle because the molding kind of makes things a little bit wonky sometimes. Although her nose is not that bad, that's just what I personally prefer to change in my models and that's what I changed on Jorg and he turned out really cool. So here I am just using this Dremel 100. My original Dremel has broken, so this is a good example that this is the cheapest Dremel you can buy and it still works really good. I'm also gonna be using a mini hacksaw that's by Husky. And I'm gonna be wearing my studio clothing. You have to remember to be super safe when dremeling. So I put on this respirator mask with particulate filters and I tie that back with my hair so that my hair is out of the way. And I would recommend always tying your hair back if you have long hair. Safety glasses are super imperative for this phase as well. And I like to wear a nitrile rubber working glove. So taking Winx here, I always start with the hacksaw just because I find there's more control and it's a cleaner cut and it's less intimidating. The Dremel cutting wheel kind of freaks me out. So using the hacksaw is an easy beginner way, I think, to removing pieces from briars. And it can be a little tricky with tails sometimes to get the right angle to be able to hacksaw. The hacksaw will often like slip and so I find the best position to put the model in is actually between my knees and that's slightly dangerous so you have to be really really careful not to nick yourself but I find that hold works the best and here we have the tail popping right off there but that leaves us with a lot of extra plastic 
I also will use the hacksaw to remove the ears and I just do this really gently and you'll see me pause and kind of tip the hacksaw out to test how loose the ear is and I can just pry it off there because I don't want to hacksaw all the way through and then have this hacksaw slip and land in my knee so I'm really careful. So she is without ears. And I'm just gonna take that Dremel with my sanding drum and sand down all those imperfections with the Dremel. So the mane actually just Dremels off fairly easily, just smooth, slow strokes. And I can also go in and remove where the ears were. And you go really, really slow not to remove details that you don't want to remove from the face. And then I'm also going to be removing the muzzle here and that is a super gentle process of just slowly removing the plastic. I want the nose to be a peak in which I can sculpt new nostrils on top of. So I remove all the nostrils, all the lip detail and the chin so that it is a fresh slate to work from. And then I also will use the Dremel to remove that inner thigh briar logo that the models have. This is just way easier with the Dremel. But I will re-drill in the groin area a air hole because we removed the air hole from the nose. So here we have the fully dremeled model. Everything is dremeled down and the bare plastic is exposed. Now, because the dremel is a little bit coarser, we do have some grain lines happening there. So I will just take my sandpaper and I'm going to remove the imperfections of the plastic. So I want to smooth this out so that it's a little bit nicer and a little bit cleaner and we're also going to prep the model in this phase so briars have a lot of seams using a 220 grit sandpaper I'm just going to kind of prep the model and sand down all those seams so all the seams on the legs on the center of the model and anything that's kind of gloopy or awkward but as well as all the dremeled down plastic that is there I find putting a towel down sometimes helps because it grips the model a little better and 150 grit sandpaper is good for taking the bulk of plastic off but the 220 is a good finishing for briar plastic So then we're gonna hop right to the sculpting phase and this is where I will mix my two parts of Magic Sculpt together and I just knead it in between my fingers until it is a smooth consistency in both color and texture. I use a little bit of water to help mix the clay as well. And then I'm just gonna place the clay over that dremeled section. So we can't fully sand out all of the imperfections that the dremel left. So I'm just gonna add a super thin layer of clay over top of the neck so that it is a smooth surface to paint the new mane on top of. Now here you can see I'm just pushing in with my thumb, doing all of this with my fingers, and I am adding a little bit of 90% isopropyl alcohol, and that helps smooth the clay even more so. I find with Magic Sculpt in specific, it works a lot better with alcohol. I find epoxy works quite well with just water, but you can play around with your preferences on what you prefer. And the biggest thing that we want here is smooth seams. So you want that clay to look like it is a part of the model without having to sand a ton. I want to build this neck back up, but I want to make sure that all those edges are really smooth and that's just pushing as hard as you can with your thumb and tapering out the edges. I'm going to do the same thing to the tail base so that we have a smooth hindquarter area to reattach a new tail using my thumb and fingers just to smooth all of this out. And then I'm also going to create a kind of butt crack, if you want to say, just some detailing that got lost. And so we want to do as much as we can before we start fleshing out the face, before we start fleshing out 
the uh, tail. So we want that foundation of the model to be really, really solid. And using this brush dipped in alcohol also helps smooth out some of those creases that my fingers may leave. So there we have the model and we're gonna let this horse cure overnight. Once it's cured, we can come back in with some sandpaper and we can sand down those edges. So we're going to add additional sanding with a 220 to 400 grit sandpaper. And this is just going to smooth out those seams even more so. And you can see I'm wearing my respirator because this epoxy dust is a lot finer and a lot more annoying on your lungs. So I recommend being careful when you sand this stuff. And I'm just going to continue to make it great. You know, the more you spend on this base kind of layer, the better outcome you're gonna have and the less prep you're gonna have. And I'm just gonna be able to sculpt a mane on top of this and it will look perfect and seamless. So that's my biggest thing. Then I'm gonna take my Sharpie and I'm going to draw down the spine and figure out where I need to place the tail. And the tail is just an extension of the spine, so it should come off naturally off of the hindquarters of the model. And I'm also going to draw the center seam of the face and position where my ears need to go. And this is a big thing that I've always struggled with in my customizing journey is placing ears correctly. The biggest thing you wanna pay attention to is that the ears will actually reconnect in line with the jaw. The front of the ear should be behind the jawline. And so there the model is all marked up and I can just drill a hole into the rump of the model and that will be where the tail is going to attach. So adding my wire into the model, I will use a drill bit the same size as the wire. And the biggest thing for tails is that you wanna measure approximately where the tail would hang if it was straight. I find that if you're doing a swishy tail, you can get a little out of control with how long the tail is. And if you were actually to straighten it out, the tail would be way past the ground. So you wanna start with that tail in the full length position and then start twisting it into your swishy position. Then I'm just gonna drop some super glue into the base of that and sprinkle it with baking soda and we can play around with the positioning of this tail. And I did insert quite a bit of wire into the inside of the model as well so that it is a very strong foundation for this tail to be sculpted on top of. And then taking a slightly finer gauge of wire, I can create some more texture just by wrapping all these wires around, adding loose pieces, and you definitely want to have a wire wire enforcer in any portion of the tail that is coming off the main bulk of the tail. Using these pliers, I'm just squishing the wire so that it doesn't move. And I look at the model from all angles as well to see that the tail is naturally flowing in the direction that I would like it to. Then almost off the get-go, we can create a tail base. So I don't sculpt right up into the hindquarters of the horse. I'll start slightly lower because this is just the base. So the top of the tail is super easy to just jump right in and detail off the bat. The lower portion of the tail will be sculpted on top of a cured base, which is just a impression of what the tail is going to look like. It's creating something to sculpt on top of that isn't so flimsy as just the wire and we can make these pieces a little bit bigger than just a single strand of wire as well. So once I have that and I'm happy with that, I will let it cure. And you can see that it is starting to come to life at all angles that the model is positioned at. 
And then I'm gonna start on the nose. So I just take two circular blobs and kind of place them on that plastic that was sanded away. And the good part about dremeled plastic is that this clay is gonna wanna stick to that plastic. So a little bit of texture is good and you don't wanna sand everything away because clay likes to stick to texture. And I'm gonna just start free forming with my fingers and my clay shaper tool and smoothing out that seam into the nose of the horse as well and then I will just create that nostril hole by pushing in my clay shaper tool and we can start to remove some of the excess clay to create that nostril flare and so at this point I'm just sculpting the nostril I'm not gonna worry about the lip line or the mouth at all I generally sculpt the nostrils first let things cure and then sculpt the lips and I find my fingers are super helpful in this in just smoothing and reshaping that nostril so this is a timely process and I really take my time here this can take up to two hours or so to just sculpt the nostrils themselves I find that they're super personable of the horse and whether they're flared or relaxed really says a lot about the expression of the model and this is just a process of studying actual horse anatomy and using reference as you go but reference from all sides is super super helpful so you want reference from the front from the side it's a learning process and your first few nostrils will not be super perfect but you learn each time you do it and my recommendation is just to sculpt as many nostrils as you possibly can the clay shaper tool is a little bit firm and i find that it works really really well for this sculpting and i have formed a little bit of that upper lip as well uh, but mostly just focusing on these nostrils making them symmetrical gonna look a little awkward in this phase because she doesn't have her lips but that's okay so then I'm going to take some clay and I'm going to start the top of that tail just detailing it out I can work on this while the nostrils are curing on the other end of the model so the biggest thing is not to rush the curing process and work on things as they dry don't push the envelope let things cure this project took me a couple of days about a week or so to work on and it's just a couple hours here and there throughout the day and then you let it cure. I form kind of the vague idea of the shape of the hair and then I have to smooth those seams on the outside of the tail so that it cohesively blends into the model and sticks to the model so there's no gap and you'll find that if you paint and sculpt your own models you really need to pay attention to this. I like using the spoon tool next to create the form of the hair just loosely sculpting the larger troughs and this is very very rough and your clay is going to ball up and beat up and be not very attractive but then you're going to smooth it out with the brush and I will show this in better example a little bit later in this tutorial as well because we're going to be sculpting the entire mane and then we can retexture in with the clay shaper tool again so it's just a combination of using slightly smaller different textured tools each phase of the hair we will brush out all the imperfections with a soft paintbrush dipped in isopropyl alcohol and the final layer is always my gum stimulator tool which is super pointy and super firm and creates a really final detail uh, edge and you can let the tail almost cure a little bit too in this process Then I can jump back in to the lip once that nostril has fully cured and I just create a noodle to create that upper lip and I'm going to create another noodle for the lower lip and the chin and we just kind of loosely vaguely form what is going to happen and then we go in with the tools and we actually shape it into the realistic form that it should be. I blend all of this with my clay shaper and it blends really easy when the clay is really fresh as the clay cures is a little more it can be a little bit harder to blend things in but certain artists like working with a certain level of cure in their clay while others work with a lesser 
cure of clay so it's totally personal preference and I use this tool to blend in all those seams and I will use the same tool to actually start to detail in a lot of the extra details so here you can see that I'm gonna create the lip line that should be in line with the horse's eye so you want to make sure that that is the right angle this tool isn't quite pointy enough to get a really definitive line for the lips but it's a good start And I can also start to build up a little bit more on top of the nostrils. So if you do things really slowly and in chunks, you can always add more clay. It becomes a little trickier to remove clay. So I always try to work small, not cram too many details in in one sculpting session and then add more clay as I go and where I see that there is problems. So adding a bit of clay under the underside of the face also was necessary. Adding a bit of clay into the side of the face was also necessary to kind of match the briar model to my new sculpting way. It's a lot of finger manipulation, tool manipulation, and brushing out with the paintbrush. But really, I don't jump around to a lot of tools. I use kind of this clay shaper tool for majority of my sculpting, if not all of my sculpting. For the ears, I like using a clay that is almost cure, so it's going to be really firm at this point, and I wait for it to almost completely solidify before sculpting ears. I will divide the clay into two equal portions and round them into balls to check the sizes. And then in the palm of my hand, I will slightly roll the clay into a almond kind of shape, and then I will pat it with my finger to create a flat shape. And then I use this pointer tool to wrap the ear around and you can see because the clay is a little firmer it does that really easily and it, it's way easier to work with <laughs> and then I essentially freeform the top with my fingers by just pushing in to create that almond ear shape and sometimes I will sculpt the ear four or five times until I'm happy with it so don't be afraid to squish it and try again both ears point slightly towards each other so we need to point one to the right and point one slightly to the left and then the base of it I don't worry too much about because I will just attach this to the model and then I will sculpt the actual ear bulb and attachment when it is fastened to the actual briar. We can just tack these guys on there to really see the size and we can play with positioning while they're still wet and because the clay is almost at the end life it works really easy to be able to do this without completely smushing the ear. So playing with expression here is really fun. And once I'm happy with that, I'm actually just gonna remove the ears from the model and I'm gonna let them cure sitting somewhere off the desk so that they don't get wrecked. And then I'm going to actually sculpt some of the extra facial detailing here so we can just add as many details as we want. And the more details we add, the more realistic this model is going to paint up when it's finished. So I'm adding in the skull details that happen above the eye and that got sanded off with the forelock. And I can sculpt in some wrinkles in the armpit crease and the underside of the legs. So either I will reattach the ears, let them cure on the model, or I will super glue them on after they have cured. And then we're just going to add the clay around the base of the ears to make that seamless transition into the head of the model. And this is another big thing that requires a lot of reference. 
Now for the mane, we're going to start on that after everything else is cured. And I just take noodles of clay and I freeform them onto the model in the impression that I want to achieve. So my camera is a little out of focus for this footage, but they get slightly smaller towards the base of the neck, but you can see it's really, really rough and it's just the idea of the hair. And this is kind of the drawing phase where you can play with it and it doesn't have to be perfect and you can remove pieces before you fully sculpt them on. So I flipped a little bit of mane onto the opposite side of the neck here and I'm just taking some alcohol, that clay shaper tool, and I'm creating that seam. Biggest thing for the hair is blending it into the body of the model. Here I'm starting with the spoon tool and just creating those deep troughs and the flow of the hair. So you really have to think about gravity when you're sculpting hair. Which way is the wind blowing? Which way is the hair pulling down, moving up? What is also aesthetically pleasing? If you have too many strands, it won't look realistic. If you have too many clusters, it won't look realistic. I'm paying attention to the offside of the mane too, where it attaches into the neck. And that's a common error is just to sculpt the mane and then worry about that later. You really want to worry about the whole mane. And I can do this entire mane in one session with all of the clay on the horse at one time, which is generally not a push uh, if it's a shorter kind of down mane like this. If the mane is super dynamic and it's free flowing in the wind, I do take several days to sculpt it in several phases. So like the tail, for example, took three days or so to sculpt in different chunks, three or four chunks. Since I'm happy with that, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to brush out all of the lumps and things, smoothing it out for the next phase of detailing. And you can actually use the paintbrush to kind of push a little harder and make that texture kind of smooth out a lot nicer than it originally was. And then I take my clay shaper tool, add some extra detailing the mane. So this is the same as what I did for the top of the tail. It's just on a larger scale. And essentially enhance all the details that I just sculpted with the spoon tool. So we just work our way from bulky sculpting to fine point sculpting. And really paying attention too to the connection of the hair to the actual neck so that there's no crevices or no creases or holes that does come up up with painting if the clay is just set on top of the model you're not gonna be able to prime under those under those hair strands and you're not gonna be able to paint under those hair strands especially if you're using an airbrush So then I take a paintbrush and I'm going to smooth all that texture out again and you're going to start to really see that this hair is coming to life. And then the final step is taking my gum stimulator tool and just creating an even finer textured line into certain areas and not necessarily all the areas because you don't want this too textury like there can be some nuance in the sense that the hair is a little bit clumpy and it just sits as it is but I do like adding a finer detail in there and that just paints up really well and I find my painting style works really well on a more textured sculpture once I'm done with that I'll go back in with my paintbrush and smooth it all out again that's essentially about all the time that you have to work with the actual clay before it's fully cured and I find you can walk away sometimes too and let this cure a little bit more and then come back in with your gum stimulator solidifies the clay a little more so that those lines are a little more seamless and not so you're not pushing around so much clay and the clay can get a little too saturated with the alcohol at times too so so there you can see that my finished mane is looking really cool I'm also gonna give her some mare parts uh, so some little teats there and I'm gonna start working on that tail so the tail is the same process as as I just explained for the main except I just work in chunks so I do my best to do as much as I can in one session but without 
having to sacrifice other sections. So you don't want to be sculpting and then having to re-sculpt everything because you're either bumping it, touching it, or smushing it. Generally I start with the upper side of the hair and then I will sculpt on the lower side of the hair. And because we already sculpted a base, I try not to put too much clay on top. So we want just a thin layer. And like I said, this was over about three or four days of sculpting sessions. So there we have the finished detailed tail, which looks pretty sweet. And then I just take the model right away and give him a good prime. And this is just going to help us see any imperfections. Before I even sand, I like to prime. So I'm using Duplicolor primer, I'm wearing my respirator and a glove, and I'm just going to cake on a layer here, but not too thick, just a thin layer, and then I will be able to see all the imperfections of what needs to be sanded and what needs to be fixed. So you can see I just have like little gloppies all over his body and we can take that 400 grit sandpaper at this point and smooth out all the imperfections. Primer works really well because it will create a divot of where there is a hole. So if I'm sanding up here, you can see that there's a line where the primer is between the epoxy and the briar itself. So you want to essentially remove that line so that it's a smooth seam that you won't notice. And then once I'm done with that, I will take this toothbrush and I will actually wash the model because sanding is so messy. You need to wash the model each time you sand before you prime so that there's no little dust particles that get caught in your primer. I do all this making sure to avoid the air hole so that water doesn't get inside the model. And then I will actually hair dry the model. And so this is my quick trick. So if you need to prime right away, just take a hair dryer on hot, use a toothbrush to get into all the crevices to pull the water out and you can dry the model model in essentially two minutes. I'm also going to add some vein details to the model before I prime again. So this is a Pabio CERN relief. You can easily add it, easily remove it if you make a mistake. It has a fine point applicator and you just drag this along while gently squeezing and I can create those veins in the cheeks, the veins on the face, and the veins essentially anywhere. I also really like using this for chestnuts. And then I also found that the leg of this horse was a little bit crooked, so using my handy dandy hair dryer, I was able to bend it back into position, run it under some cold water, and reprime. So there we have the finished model. I think she turned out so cool. She looks super unique and one of a kind now, but you can see that the sculpture of the briar is still really really nice. The additions that I added to her just make her that much more realistic. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and happy customizing.